Canada is investing heavily in its transit infrastructure, and the country's most ambitious transit projects reflect the growing needs for a sustainable, efficient transportation. This video is going to cover the 10 most expensive transit projects that are currently underway or in the planning stages across Canada, ranked from least to most expensive. In 10th place, we have the Broadview Subway Project, pegged at $2.83 billion. Vancouver's Broadway Subway Project is a major extension of the city's Millennial Line, running for 5.7 kilometers along one of the busiest corridors in the city. The subway will serve six new underground stations and is a crucial part of the region's efforts to reduce traffic congestion and provide more sustainable transportation options. With this investment of $2.8 billion by both the provincial and federal governments, the Broadway subway aims to improve transit access for the growing population along Vancouver's Broadway corridor. This project is expected to boost both residential and commercial development in the area, making it a key piece in Vancouver's urban transformation. In my opinion, Vancouver's Broadway subway project is a solid step forward for the city, particularly in addressing transit gaps in an increasingly congested urban area. Expanding the Millennium Line makes sense for this densely populated corridor, and the subway underground nature will minimize disruption during construction. While the budget is relatively modest compared to some others, I feel the project is a bit rushed. The completion timeline may be too optimistic, and there could be some hiccups along the way. Still, this is an essential project for Vancouver's long-term transit vision. Coming in at ninth place is the Hamilton LRT, which is pegged to cost $3.4 billion. The Hamilton Light Rail Transit Project will create a 14-kilometer LRT line across one of the most populous regions in southern Ontario. Connecting McMaster University with Eastgate Square, the $3.4 billion LRT project will feature 17 stations and provide a high-frequency transit solution that addresses the city's long-standing traffic and transit issues. This project is set to transform Hamilton Transit system, and while a reliable, efficient alternative to the city's bus network. Once complete, the LRT will facilitate better mobility and access, especially in a region experiencing significant population growth. Hamilton's LRT project has the potential to significantly revitalize the downtown area and provide a more sustainable transit option. At $3.4 billion, the budget is on the lower end of the scale for large-scale transit projects, but I feel like this is an area that could benefit from an even bolder vision. Hamilton's transit infrastructure has been underwhelming for years, so this LRT project will fill an important gap. But there's also a lot of local opposition. And the project has faced delays, which makes me question if the benefits will be worth the cost in the long run. Then in eighth place, we have the Edmonton Valley Line LRT at $3.7 billion. Spanning 27 kilometers and featuring 25 stations, the Valley Line is set to connect key neighborhoods from Mill Woods in the east to Lewis Farms in the west. With a budget of $3.7 billion, the Valley Line will significantly enhance Edmonton's transit capacity providing fast, reliable, and eco-friendly transit across one of Canada's most rapidly growing urban areas. The project is a critical component of the city's plan to improve accessibility and reduce congestion in the long term. Edmonton's Valley Line LRT project is one of the city's most ambitious transit undertakings in recent history. At $3.7 billion, it's not the most expensive on the list, but it's a major investment for a city that has long struggled with inadequate transit. I'm excited about the potential to connect underserved neighborhoods and provide a more efficient way to navigate Edmonton. However, the scale of the project and the large number of stations could lead to challenges around construction delays and disruptions. Edmonton's rapidly growing population means this LRT could be a big win for the future of the city's transportation network. Coming in at seventh place, we have the Surrey Langley Skytrain extension at $3.95 billion. This expansion of the Expo Line in Metro Vancouver will extend the Skytrain network from Surrey to Langley. With a price tag of $3.95 billion, this 16-kilometer extension will add eight stations, linking more suburban areas to Vancouver's urban core. The extension is designed to alleviate overcrowding on existing transit lines and accommodate future population growth in the Fraser Valley region. This expansion is particularly important for improving transit access in Langley and Surrey, which will have seen rapid development and increasing demand for transit solutions. The Surrey Langley Skytrain extension is another essential piece of infrastructure for Metro Vancouver. This extension will help address rapid population growth and ease the pressure on other transport systems in the region. I'm generally supportive of the Skytrain network as it's one of the most efficient rapid transit systems in Canada, but I'm concerned about the costs. This project feels a bit rushed and I'd like to see a clearer plan for how it integrates with the broader Metro Vancouver transit network. 
However, it's a good investment for future growth. Then in sixth place, we have the Quebec City Tramway at $8.4 billion. The Quebec City Tramway project is a major overhaul of the city's transit system, designed to improve mobility while reducing traffic congestion. Initially estimated at only $4 billion, the cost has ballooned to $8.4 billion after several reevaluations and design changes. The project involves the construction of a 23-kilometer tramway network connecting key areas of the city, including the old port and the suburbs. With a completion date set for the early 2030s, this project aims to modernize Quebec City's transit infrastructure while addressing increasing demand for sustainable urban transportation options. The tramway will also provide environmentally friendly alternatives to car use, thus contributing to the city's overall goal of reducing carbon emissions. I think that this project is absolutely necessary. Quebec City is known for its historic charm and vibrant population, but its public transit has often felt outdated. The tramway will give the city a modern and sustainable transportation option. However, the sharp rise in costs from $4 billion to $8.4 billion is worrying. I'd be concerned about whether the increased cost will affect the quality or scope of the service in the end. Nevertheless, it has the potential to reshape the city's public transport network and should encourage more people to leave their cars behind. Coming in in fifth place is the Scarborough Subway Extension. The Scarborough Subway Extension was estimated to originally cost only $3.56 billion, but since then that cost has now ballooned to $8.1 billion. The rising costs are due to inflation, construction complexities, and the shift to a full subway rather than an LRT. This extension replaces the defunct Scarborough RT, which was decommissioned in 2023. The new subway will provide a more reliable, high-capacity alternative, but won't be open until 2030 or 2031 at the earliest. Until then, Scarborough commuters are stuck with a painfully slow replacement bus service. This project shouldn't have cost this much, and it shouldn't have taken this long. The Ford government scrapped the Scarborough LRT plan, which would have delivered rapid transit sooner and at a lower cost, in favor of a subway extension that takes longer to build and serves fewer stops. Yes, a subway is more permanent and reliable than an LRT, but for the price of this one subway extension, the city could have built multiple LRT lines covering more of Scarborough. The real issue is that Scarborough commuters have been left without rapid transit for nearly a decade while this project drags on. The temporary bus replacement service is slow and inconvenient, making commutes worse. Bottom line, a subway is good, but it came at too high a cost with too long of a wait. The LRT plan should have never been scrapped. Then in fourth place we have the high frequency rail corridor between Toronto and Quebec City, estimated to cost about $12 billion. This project aims to create a high speed rail network connecting Toronto and Quebec City, reducing travel time significantly. The plan includes trains traveling up to 200 kilometers an hour along a dedicated passenger track, which will vastly improve efficiency compared to traditional rail services. By increasing the frequency of trains between major cities, this project hopes to provide an attractive alternative to flying or driving. Additionally, it will support regional development and improve sustainability by encouraging more people to use public transit for intercity travel. This project is an amazing idea, but at $12 billion, it feels like a very ambitious undertaking. A high-speed rail corridor could drastically reduce travel time between two major Canadian cities, but the viability of this project depends heavily on the efficiency and implementation. Trains that can travel at 200 kilometers an hour are great for long-distance commutes, but the political and environmental hurdles involved in creating this kind of a rail infrastructure will be substantial. If successful, it could be a game-changer, but that's a big if. Then coming in at third place is the Eglinton Crosstown LRT, now estimated to cost $12.1 billion. The Eglinton Crosstown LRT in Toronto is a 19-kilometer light rail project that promises to transform transit on one of the city's busiest corridors. Initially set at $5.3 billion, delays and additional construction costs have pushed the figure above $12 billion. The LRT will connect key neighborhoods from the west to the east of Toronto, linking commuters to the subway system and providing a reliable, quick alternative to buses and cars. The project, which has now been under construction for more than a decade, is slated to open in phases, with full completion expected soon. When completed, it will drastically reduce commute times along Eglinton Avenue. I've been watching the Eglinton Crosstown LRT project with both excitement and frustration. The concept is fantastic. It will connect a major east-west corridor in Toronto and provide relief to heavily congested areas, but the rising costs and never-ending delays are hard to ignore. I think the LRT is essential for improving transit options in Toronto, but this project feels like a prime example of how bureaucracy and 
underestimating costs can really drag things out. I just hope that the end result justifies the investments and inconvenience. In second place, we have the GoRail expansion on Corridor Works, estimated right now at $13.5 billion. As a part of Metrolinx's GoRail expansion program, the On Corridor Works project is set to transform the Greater Toronto and Hamilton Area's commuter rail network. This $13.5 billion initiative will expand rail services, electrify sections of the network, and add new tracks to accommodate more trains. The expansion will include the construction of new stations, improvements to train control systems, and increased service frequency. These enhancements are expected to carry over 100 million riders annually, significantly reducing congestion on highways while providing faster and more reliable public transportation options for commuters. I think that the Go Rail expansion is one of the most promising and necessary projects for the Greater Toronto Area. The Go Rail expansion project is going to make regional travel much easier and more reliable, reducing congestion on the roads and providing more transit options for commuters. Electrification and additional tracks are critical for modernizing the network. However, $13.5 billion is a hefty price tag, and I'm worried about whether the project will be completed on time and within budget. Still, I think this expansion will significantly improve the region's transportation landscape if executed well. In first place, we have none other than the Ontario Line, which is now expected to exceed over $20 billion. The Ontario Line, a new 15.6 kilometer rapid transit line in Toronto, will connect where the Ontario Science Centre used to be at Don Mills and Eglinton in the north to the exhibition place in the south, crossing through dense urban corridors. Originally estimated at $10.9 billion, costs have skyrocketed due to various delays and modifications to its scope. The Ontario Line is part of Toronto's plan to alleviate congestion and make the city's transit system more efficient. Once complete, it will provide fast, frequent service with modern trains, reducing pressure on the existing Young University subway line. This project is part of a larger provincial commitment to improving transit access in the greater Toronto area, which will have a transformative impact on the region's mobility. The Ontario Line is one of the most exciting projects for Toronto, but I'm deeply concerned about the soaring budget. The original estimate of $10.9 billion seemed ambitious but doable, but now the project's ballooned to over $20 billion. Sure, the demand for better transit in Toronto is huge, and this line could significantly ease congestion, but that price tag feels out of control, especially when you think about other competing infrastructure needs. I hope that it can be completed without further delays and cost increases. Canada's largest transit projects are a mix of necessary upgrades and bold ideas for the future. While most of them have great potential to improve regional mobility and reduce congestion, they also come with risks, including rising costs, delays, and political pushback. As a whole, I support the direction these projects are taking, but they need to be executed carefully to avoid burdening taxpayers with spiraling costs and unnecessary delays. If managed properly, these projects could define Canada's transit future for decades to come. I hope that you liked the video. If so, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed and want to be notified of new videos that are released, please click on the Art Toronto button here. This is the video that I would recommend for you to watch next, and I'm sure that you're going to love it. Here's the playlist for all of the latest in transit news and views that you're going to find very informative and interesting. And finally, here is the latest video. Thanks for watching and happy transiting.